You know, back in 1926, a young man was headlining at the Palace Theater in New York. And tonight he's here in our Hollywood Palace, and he's still a headliner and bigger than ever. He's going to do some of the act that he did in those days. In fact, he did it recently for the boys in Vietnam, and they loved it. You know, he's no longer a vaudevillian. He's now known as the Toastmaster General of the United States, my friend, Georgie Jessel. I certainly want to thank Phil for that warm introduction. I was listening to it for a minute and I thought I was dead. <laughs> but it's a remarkable thing after almost a half century in the show business, this is the first time that I have ever appeared on the stage with Phil Harris. And it seems so strange, because we have so much in common, you know. I drink, too. You know. <laughs> yes, the days of the palace are a long time ago. Many roads have been journeyed. Many things have happened. And I used to come out on the stage, and in those days, I sang flat. I don't do it anymore. <laughs> yeah. Shut up. I'm... <laughs> so to excuse my singing flat, I would apologize to the audience and say, well, I have a cold. And I've just taken one of those four-way cold tablets. The one I took went one way twice, and the other two I haven't heard from. <laughs> <laughs> then, I, then I used to say, uh, sing a song called My Mother's Eyes, which I used in a picture. And then I used to say, and now I'd like to call my mother on the telephone. Would you like to hear me call my mother on the telephone? <laughs> Could have got somebody cheaper to bring out a phone. Hello. <laughs> Operator one English, 8614, please. <laughs> Hello, Mrs. Tableman. How are you, Mr. Tableman? Georgie Jessel. You up? You just fell down the stairs and broke your ankle. Isn't that a terrible thing, a woman of your age, Mrs. Tableman? Would you mind running up three flights and asking my mother to come down here? Well, <laughs> oh, my mother is there with you now. Well, that's a coincidence. I say to her, it's good that she's there. Yeah, put her on the phone. Thank you. Mama, Georgie, your son from the money every week. How are you? <laughs> well, I've been worried about you. How do you feel today? Oh, you see spots in front of your eyes. Well, why don't you wear your glasses, honey? They're up on your forehead. <laughs> well, how long will it take to get them down? Is it not like putting up a building? You put them down. You got the glasses on? How is it? See the spots better. <laughs> How would you like that bird I sent you home for the parlor? You cooked it? <laughs> that was smart. That was a South American bird. He spoke five languages. He should have said something? <laughs> <laughs> How is my little brother Willie? He said something cute. What did he say? He wants to go in business? Isn't that cute? A little boy, 10 years old. What kind of business does he want to go in? Stealing tires? <laughs> Put your sister on the phone, Willie. Hello. Anna Georgie. Look, honey, I'm your oldest brother, and if I don't have your interest at heart, so who, who's going to do it? What's going to be with that fellow, for heaven's sake? You're engaged now 33 years, Anna. <laughs> you think you'll be married this winter? Why? Last night he said it'll be a cold day, but he went, all right. <laughs> the fellow is a bum, honey. He doesn't want to work. Oh, he will work when his trade comes back. What is his trade that's going to come back? Milking reindeers? <laughs> There's not even a union for that, honey. <laughs> I know. You love him, why? Because he's so good-hearted. What made you think he's so good-hearted? When he goes in the streets, the dogs lick his hands. If he'd eat once with a knife and fork, they wouldn't... <laughs> <laughs> Put your mother back on the phone. Mama? I just talked to her, but what are you going to do? Well, the girl is in love, and there you are. You know what Longfellow tells us? Tell me not in mournful numbers, life is but an empty dream. I say, Longfellow told us that. I shouldn't go around with him, he's drunk. <laughs> no, 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 Henry was with Longfellow, the poet. He didn't live next door to us at all. That was Lowenstein, a bookmaker who lived next door. <laughs> Who's making all that noise in the house? They can hardly hear you. Little Louis Tableman, what is he hollering about? He just followed the $5 gold piece that I gave Willie for Christmas? What are you going to do about it, Mama? Oh, Louie's going to live with us for a while, huh? <laughs> after, after my act, 
after it's over, I used to run up to the Winter Garden to hear the great Al Jolson. I can hear him now. I say, folks, you ain't heard nothing yet. And you know something about Jolson? He got a lot of credit as just a singer of song. He was a great emotional actor because all of his songs were acting. And he didn't mean it in himself because all of his songs were Swanee, How I Love You. I want to go back to Dixie. He didn't want to be in Dixie any more than Goldwater wanted to be in Dixie. <laughs> Jolson never was in Dixie. Once I think went as far as Baltimore, he ate some kind of chitlins and threw up. He never went for his <laughs> His greatest song, Mammy, I want to be with my Mammy in Alabama. What Mammy, Alabama? Well, there was an old Jewish woman in Brooklyn. She said, what the heck he was singing about after <laughs> He said, folks, here's a new song called Rock Up Your Baby with a Dixie Melody. Play it, Professor. I'd go up to the Zickfell Roof in New York and hear the beloved Eddie Kansas sing Susie. George, you can tell with all of these many people and our viewers just how much they love you. You were wonderful. Thank Absolutely you, wonderful. Thank May there always be a Georgie Jess. Well, you're very kind. You know something? That Cantor impression was, well, that was just too much. But the one that amazed me <coughs> was the one you do of Jolson. I just didn't think you could do it. Why, you didn't think I could sing? No, when you got down on your knee, I never thought you'd get up. <laughs> well, Phil, I'm used to it from proposing. Oh, yes. <laughs> Georgie, I understand that the friars are giving you a big testimonial dinner and all of your friends in our profession and all of your other many friends throughout the United States and the world, in fact, are going to be there. And I'm sure that our viewers, and I know I would like to hear, uh, what are you going to say that night? Well, I'm not going to make much of a speech. I'm going to do just talk about a minute, Phil. Uh, my very dear friend is Cardinal Cushing of Boston. And he gave me a little prayer to say called an Irish prayer. And I'm going to dedicate it to the folks at my dinner and to his lovely people and yourself and family here. And it goes like so. May the road rise up to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warm on your face and the rain fall soft on your field. And until we meet again, may God hold you all in the hollow of his hand. Thank you. Beautiful. Sir. Thank you, Jeff.